What's going on, everybody? We're back. Cool zone. Friday. Mel Mass. How's it going? So, I'm going to keep going with these who lie. Jeff, how's it going? Black Ruku, good to see you again. Um, yeah, so this, we're just going to keep going today. Um, I have this topic, water, water. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to keep going with these who lie uh, daily challenges or whatever. Um, we're on the 3rd of July. Uh, get started just doing some water. Um, just gonna start off with like a flip solver and start using some pop forces and, and moving things around with it. I wanted to participate, but I have too much work. I might do some next week. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's getting, <laughs> this, it's a pretty quick, um, rate that they're doing with these like daily turnarounds and stuff like that it's kind of turning into this uh who i consumed every minute of my days yeah me it's a bit too much i think i'm starting to turn into uh to this picture where it's like it's time for your who daily submission i'm turning into the uh, <laughs> the guy that's exhausted steve gh good to see you so um we'll get started with this water uh we just have this sphere right here um i'm gonna try something i haven't i don't know if this is gonna work um so i'm trying to make a stop network in, in inside of my uh, geometry container. And then if I do uh, flip fluid from object, let's see if it's smart enough to uh, to put it in. Whoops, gotta grab it. Did it do it? Kind of did it. It has an error. So maybe, um, Let's just try this. Kind of worked. I don't know. Sometimes I wish these shelf tools it was easier to make um, things in line. Like I know they have the um, preferences, maybe this shelves and tab. I, for, I forget where it is, but there's somewhere. September, good to see you back in here. Um, somewhere in here it was like create shelf tools in context or something, but I've never had 100% success with it. But we'll just try it this way. Um, should be good. We're, I just want to start with like a sphere of water. I'm not too uh, concerned about some of the other stuff right now. We'll do. Maybe this pop axis force. Can you tell us more about this hulai challenge some are doing right now? Yeah, I don't, uh, I think I got this in the wrong input. I'm gonna go into particle velocity um, and then do this orbit. So uh, if you just go to the side effects website, um, sideeffects.com, they have, uh, this Ulai daily challenge. Um, I think it's their take on like other like 3D software. I think Blender had like a node vember, like November, but node vember uh, last year, where every day people were trying to make a different element or a different effect essentially. Um, so side effects has done this. Um, I don't know how many people are too concerned about like the, uh, the prizes. I, I think, I don't know. Um, oh, they started giving people. I got some black pixel in the lead. Um, so the, I, I don't think they're too concerned about like 
I don't know. It's just more for fun and for to keep yourself like inspired or, or uh, practice and stuff like that. At least that's how I'm kind of uh, considering it. So um, yeah, it's just just for fun, I, I would say. Uh, yeah, so today is the water prompt. So I'm just playing around with um, some of this top axis force and kind of use it to make fling, fling water in, in certain directions. You just get some interesting shapes. You like spin, um, lift is like spurt upwards kind of, like a, you're throwing water up in the air or something like that. And uh, I think if we do reduce the particle separation, you get just a little bit more detail into things. And if um, we want this to be like a smaller scale kind of fluid, uh, if you just go to the flip solver under volume motion with surface tension, you just turn this on and then um, it starts off maybe a bit too low, but this way you can start to get some of the like tendrils or the globular um, like fingering or, or that kind of stuff. Um, you kind of see it a little bit there, like it should get some more uh, defined shapes. So it's starting off with the surface tension at 10, it's a bit low, like usually 100 to me is the maximum. I don't know if it depends on the, the scale of the scene you're working at, but now with it a little bit above 100, you can see like the, the water has a tendency to um, gather on the outside and then it's ripping, it, the sheet is like ripping itself up and scooping the fluid into, into bigger portions. Whoa, it's pretty fun. Um, so it might be a bit high, I don't know, like somewhere between 50 and 100 is usually the good a good territory I tried to stay in. Um, that might be it, like with surface tension, right now we have a pretty good, like small scale kind of water effect. Is using this as like a reference <laughs> when I was adding it to my uh, Instagram story for the, the stream announcement or whatever. It was like a uh, small scale fluid with the crown splash, you, you tend to get those kind of uh, surface tension effects. Is your bounding box domain slow if, if uh, slow it down if too big? Is it based on number of particles? Um, the flip solver works a little bit different than the pyro solver. That's why I'm not as concerned with it. This is basically like the maximum um, area that things can travel in, but it's sparse in the sense that if you um, middle mouse button on these, like it does create some volumes to keep track of other aspects of the fluid, but they are sparse. Um, so the, they're just based off of where the particles are. So it doesn't slow it down to have this extra area unless you're actually filling it. Um, so it's more based off of number of particles, but then also like just spatially how, how spread out you, the particles are. Um, you can visualize those volumes. Like if I turn on surface, this is the that, uh, surface. Um, it's using like a volume to keep track of the the flip surface or what's considered water and what's considered air. So you can see what I mean by this being sparse, that it's only, um, this volume is only this big, even though our domain or, or the, the area it's allowed to go in is a lot bigger. 
And then the same thing with velocities as well. Like it doesn't keep track of velocities everywhere. Um, like pyro does keep track of velocity everywhere. So that's why you have to be a bit more careful with the pyro uh, domain. So when you get this um, surface tension like a bit too high, so you get some weird like vibration. I don't know, like that stuff is kind of jiggling back and forth a bit too much. Um, there's a couple different ways to approach it. Like one thing sometimes I do is just this pop drag. I don't know if this is the best way to uh, to approach it, but that's one way that you can just kind of like settle things down a bit. It's like globally changes and just slows down everything. So it's not always the best way to, to go. Usually just like a little bit. I've been surprised how many people are submitting to the uh, Hulai, but it's like 200 people a day or something. So with this extra drag, you can see like it's a little bit more contained. There's like less uh, vibrations or, or undulations or whatever like that. You can also, if you just tick this uh, magenta colored box, you can hide like the domain, um, the bounds visualization. The hardest part is coming up with unique ideas for Hulai. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, um, it's a bit hard. And I think like just looking at these, these, these two, I don't know. The materials stuff it should in motion is more easy, I think, to come up with ideas, at least for me. But like, I don't know about these two categories. It's like to to make this kind of stuff without any assets or uh, anything else, like all within one day and get it looking good is uh, a bit. Yeah, the geo has to be created in Houdini or um, I don't know. It seems a bit odd the way that They've set up the rules like they do have geo that they provide on Orbolt and I think you can use Orbolt assets. So like, I don't know, there's some, probably some weird workarounds you could do. I was kind of doing that yesterday with my uh, using like the motion capture geometry. Uh, like th that animation was some people might have maybe thought that was like cheating or something, but it's you could always just do it anyways and just um, I don't know. I don't know how litigious they're going to be with the rules. <laughs> so with this drag just a little bit, you can kind of like settle the fluid down. Um, let's get back into this axis force. I'm going to kill the lift. So orbit just spins it around um, and suction with reverse suction. You can like push push stuff outwards. It's pretty cool. It's like a wagon wheel kind of effect. Whoosh. So this uh, pop axis force only affects things within the this guide or the uh, shape. So outside of here, there uh, there's no forces or anything like that being applied. So I might want to um, have another force to conduct, like force the fluid back towards the center or something like that. Uh, this is kind of like what Jeff was asking about. So as this fluid takes up more area, the volumes that it needs to create are expanding, so it's going slower every frame. Um, 
so that's kind of what one of the effects you can tell with even though the domain size isn't changing just spatially how much uh, area the, the fluid takes up will change the speed of things so with this pop attract um, if we look at this force scale like if I just do 10 then I'll kind of have these two forces fighting against each other so one one thing's trying to push stuff out the other thing's trying to push things in we get like this equi equilibrium something like that um, could be a bit more interesting if we do the vex expressions so this uh, What we can do is scale this force by the length of P. I think I just need to do that at symbol for the, the attribute binding or whatever. Um, so this way, my force will be scaled as the position gets further from the origin or uh, further from the center of, uh, of this force. So if I reduce this smaller, then we'll just change the spatially, like when things start changing from blowing outwards to getting pulled back in. So it's pretty cool in this um, section right here where it rips apart as it's like spinning. Whoa, it's a nice moment. Another thing with this flip solver is they have these two different kernels, like splashy or swirly. I think the swirly one might be better for like smaller scale effects like this, like um, the surface tension and, and small scale fluids. We'll just generate like smoother, cleaner shapes, I think, instead of like getting less stray particles. And then under solver, this one also has an open CL. It doesn't um, speed things up as much as the pyro open CL, but it, I think it's still nice to, uh, to turn it on if you have like a good graphics card. So, Maybe with this pop attract, if we do like a exponent, this way as um, things, it just changes the relationship of like the further things get, uh, the the force pulling them back in will grow exponentially instead of like linearly um, getting stronger. So you can see it more quickly like reaches its um, furthest extents or whatever before returning and then uh, spinning around. I might want to add another force. Um, this one's just gonna be like an ambient uh, wind or noise or something like that, just to try to add some um, detail to the to the fluid. If I just turn off everything else, you'd see this ambient force is just adding some like interesting undulations or motion or whatever to this droplet. Whoa, pretty cool. Um, maybe I'll start with that drag turned off for right now.
<clears throat> yeah, so I don't know with the who lies stuff. I might, I might, uh, after fire, I might take some time off or I don't know. It's getting to be a bit too, too, uh, too much work every day. So I'm going to try to boost this stuff a little bit, um, just to kind of exaggerate the uh, motion so that it shoots out a lot faster at the start. And then the way that this relationship is, like it should return a bit quicker as well, because this is an exponential relationship. So the further that this um, gets away from the center, the more dramatic or the, the stronger that uh, it, it will just get ripped like right back um, towards the middle of everything. So it might be a bit too much. I'm gonna reduce my ambient force as well. So I might reduce my particle separation a bit more. Um, try this <clears throat> as a flip book and see what happens. I'm just trying to get a little bit more detail inside of things when uh, those little holes and, and sheets, when the sheet starts to like rip apart. Um, the more, the more you reduce the particle separation, the better you can kind of represent those little uh, tears, the little tendrils or whatever. I don't know, it's looking a bit too messy right now. It's like too, too high frequency of a, I want something a bit more like um, smooth or elegant looking. This is a bit too chaotic. So one thing you can do to um, change that kind of relationship is just playing around with this particle radius scale. Um, this is a bit hard to explain, but it's or hard to conceptualize. But um, what it's basically doing is saying like how much volume the solver should treat each particle as having. So the surface tension, like it plays a lot in with the surface tension. Um, making my particle radius scale bigger should like increase the thickness of those little tendrils. I might just be like ripping, my forces might just be a bit too, too strong though to, for it to really have an effect on things. But you could see it did get rid of like the one stray particle, like some of those that that were um, flinging way off. Like this basically, it's kind of like thickness of the fluid. I don't know, it's a very, it's a hard thing to kind of conceptualize, but more the blobbiness of the fluid, maybe it's a good way to think about it. Let's just go a bit higher with it. Um, and then I think my orbit like rotational speed is just a bit too strong at the start. Um, let's try this one. So this stuff is 
previously was just getting like disappearing or these shapes it's too much i'm trying to refine it and get um a better looking pattern so just like simplify the shapes when uh stuff is getting pulled apart The drag should help. Yeah, I should probably add it back in. Um, I think I, yeah, I deactivated it for a little bit. So I'll boost it. Um, might just go a little bit smaller with that particle radius scale. And, uh, go up to 100 for surface tension so I don't know it's a, it's a delicate balance with the surface tension but if you don't have it high enough you'll kind of end up with something like this and then when you have it too high it, like things are just going back and forth but it, when you find the right amount you can get really um, nice looking patterns when when stuff like pulls apart I feel like it's also a factor of just the the amount of particles you have. It's possible I have too many right now, but it's hard to know. This is looking a bit better. So I might try adding, um, I'm actually going to make a few changes. I'm going to go to my flip object and turn up the particle separation a little bit. It's just a bit too slow uh, for what we're doing right now. Um, then I'll add another sphere up here. Maybe like a four for the um, uniform scale. Plug it in like that, and uh, then I'll use it as a static object. I think I can just steal this expression. Say, get the <clears throat> the next input. Um, collisions. If you want, you can use this uh, implicit sphere. If you know you're using a sphere, you can use it and it kind of helps more accurate. Like you'll never get faceting or like problems with subdivision or stuff like that. Um, and then invert sign. So invert sign is saying treat the inside like air and the outside like a boundary. So I'm hoping to get some interesting details when this uh, fluid like really shoots off and uh, splashes up against the, ed the edge of this sphere. But I might not, <clears throat> like my uh, attraction force might be too strong. Um, let's go back. Maybe this boundary sphere will make it a little smaller as well. So it should be hitting it. We're starting to get some some nice uh, boom details on the edge and stuff. Umer, 
you're, you're not too late. We're still just getting set up. Um, just did this kind of flip from object tool and I've just been adding these particle forces to it so far. I looked through that link, your your portfolio link you dropped at the end of the stream yesterday. It looked pretty, some, some nice fluid stuff in there. So these holes are pretty cool. Getting some nice stuff. I don't know if this swirly kernel. Sometimes it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know, that swirly kernel seemed to be giving me a little bit worse shapes when it was like getting really thin, uh, sheeting like that. So I think, I think um, this orbit speed, I'm gonna increase it a lot more just to have some more in initial like momentum or uh, velocity. So this way, when when stuff hits the edge of this sphere, it will have uh, more like motion, more force, and stuff to it. This now we're getting some nice little crown uh, tendrils, or I don't know what the proper name is for. You guys know what these are called? <laughs> like uh, spikes? I don't know. Droplets. They call it a crown splash. Yes, yeah, so I guess because it's the. Uh, I don't even know what part of the crown that it, like, <laughs> the anatomy of a crown. It's like the spikes, or whatever, on on the stuff. So my plan here is to just have like a sphere for the start of my animation. Um, maybe just have it uh, disperse like this and collide with the invisible barrier. Um, and then I'm just trying to do some interesting stuff with the forces now to uh, control it in in a like somewhat cool manner. Um, and then at the end, I'm probably going to try to force it back into the uh, initial shape. So I don't know about it staying at the edge of the sphere too much. Um, Gonna see what happens if I just add time. Tentacles, yeah, tendrils, or I just didn't know if there was a. You think a little bit of viscosity? That that can tend to help. Um, might might add it. What what do you think? Um, that, that can work kind of well, like the drag. Um, if we just go to physical, we could control it here. You think that's a, a good number? 0.5? Um, but yeah, with the tentacles, like I was just wondering if there was a physically uh, proper name to call them. Uh, I never, I, uh, yeah, I'm just making up <laughs> terminology. People tend to do that with the smoke simulations, like whenever you see the mushrooms 
I've heard people call those eggs or uh, just other other uh, just random names that people come up with. So this, we're starting to get it a little bit better, I think. Um, might be this time is just too dramatic. So it was just increasing at like two, uh, the amount of like inward attraction force was increasing too quickly. So I just reduced that by uh, four, four times or whatever. We're doing 25% of the uh, increase in, in force. You think 0.5 is good for viscosity, Corinne I know like 5,000 is like, you get closer to like cement. Um, like five, I think like 500 is closer to, <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, nobody really knows. You just type in numbers until uh, you try it out. I guess it also um, depends on the scale of your scene and some other stuff like that. Whoa, that's something. Something going on there. I don't know how this stuff, the viscosity might be causing it to stick to the collider. I feel like that's a setting here, viscosity like slip on collision. I believe that's saying to cling kind of to uh, your collision shapes, but it might just be, be like because I think the way they implement this is by blurring the velocity field, like you'll always get a bit of clinging with uh, adding viscosity. So I might just try turning it off. See if trying to get this stuff to like ride. I have an invisible sphere that um, I'm pushing everything out outwards against. Um, I'm trying to get like a uh, I don't know if it was just tweaking my forces or yeah, I'm trying to get some little tendrils and uh, stuff sneaking along the edges of this. This is the best, I feel like, when you get the thin sheet inside of things and then the uh, border like is uh, stringy. Whoa, boom. So I think the starting of it is starting to uh, work pretty well. We did lose it. We just might need more particles for this, this portion of it to resolve a little bit better, um, just to look more interesting. I might have like spun things around a bit too much. Yama Basun, <laughs> you're uh, not too late. But uh, we just, we've just added a flip object and then I've added these pop forces to control the fluid. Uh, we kind of have like an anti-gravity abstract uh, kind of effect happening. So I'm just trying to, I have an invisible collider. Um, so I think if I just go right here, just do like flip, uh, then I can visualize stuff. So I have this invisible sphere that I'm like splashing the water up against. Um, and right now it's just spinning around because I have this excess force in the middle. Um, I have like two different forces that I'm balancing. Um, one is just constrained to the center of my world with this, 
with this uh, red guide. And then um, I have a pop attract that I've linked up with the um, distance that it gets from this origin or from, from the center of my world. So I'm basically saying like, when it gets close to the middle, rotate and, and fling outwards. And then when it gets too far, pull back in. So I have an interesting balance as, as things uh, undulate or like uh, compensate with each other or whatever. So this, this is pretty nice. Maybe a bit long. <laughs> I think as my um, time increases, I'm using that to to change the uh, the the amplitude or the strength of my attraction force. It might be getting a bit too too much. Um, how do you render it? Create a VDB and then polygons from the VDB. Yeah, I usually do that approach. Um, they have the VDB. Uh, or the particle fluid surface tool that's like uh, meant to be their kind of tool to do that but I, I usually just will go in and do this stuff manually um, then you have a bit more control over like the smoothing operations and stuff like that um, yeah because I don't know the particle fluid surface it's just a bit it's not necessarily a, bla a black box because you can go inside and like mess around with it but some of the tools they make they just have too much stuff going on inside of them that uh <laughs> the vdb from particle fluid does not look good to me yeah it's i mean it's uh, it's kind of like their shelf tools and stuff it's just designed as like a kind of place for for people to start with but then doing more advanced or getting things looking better, like when you want more control over that kind of stuff. The mesh gets too smooth, you lose all the detail from Flip. Yeah, it's a, it's always a bit difficult to balance the two because like when you try to have too much detail, um, you will start to see like the individual particles um, and you'll get like a lumpy, it's like you, uh, the fluid is just difficult because you want it to be very smooth in certain areas and then very like it's just very specific like physical properties that um is hard to get it uh like represented with particles and then converting to vdb and then converting to polygons but we'll see how close we can get today there isn't a golden uh bullet or a, a solution that fixes it for every case you generally end up just like hacking your way through. So what I was trying to do here was deactivate um, the attraction, the axis that's like blowing stuff out and spinning it around. But now I think that this attraction force, you kind of have a another issue with it where it's pulling things toward the towards the middle with such strong force that they like flip around and if that makes sense like they keep aiming at the middle with such such a high velocity that they surpass their target and go in the other direction and then it's just like bouncing back and forth so that's kind of what's happening now um i mean it looks pretty cool i'm not super super upset with it but um it is something that I'll want to clean up a bit for uh, for the end. Let's see how this flipbook looks. Um, so yeah, I think just over time we want we want stuff to be actually collecting in the middle of everything. Uh, so one one thing we can do with that is if we like link up or as we increase uh, the attraction force, we also increase the amount of drag that we add. Um, so the idea with this is that 
when you're adding, you're pulling stuff towards a target, you also increase the amount of drag that you apply. So it's easier for stuff to stop, like as it approaches that um, destination. It's kind of like if you're rolling a ball down a hill, like it will go in the valley back and forth for a long time. But um, if you push the ball up to the top of a hill, it's very easy to, to leave it or to stop it at the top of the hill. So this drag is kind of like giving it some friction or giving it something to uh, push back against. So it makes it easier to, uh, to end in, in the middle. It appears more controlled and less like sp sp splishy splashy or whatever. Flocking with flip would be pretty cool. Yeah, you can get um, kind of flocking based effects with um, the surface tension, like just grouping and uh, collection of, of things. So I'm just going to divide that uh, drag um, increase over time by, f by eight. So it's increasing at half the rate that my attraction is increasing. It was just collecting in the middle too quickly. I feel like I got a bit too deep with yesterday's uh, effect. I started just breaking out too many uh, DOP networks and too many solvers. I feel like that's a classic mistake to make with these daily uh, work. Like you're, you're just usually used to like working on features or time with a lot of R&D to, to spend on an effect. And then when you try to make something in a day, you're like, let's add this custom force. Let's add this post simulation secondary simulation effect and all that. And then you just don't have enough time to like actually control the result that you want. So I'm trying to stay a little bit simpler today. Um, I think it's just easier to produce something that looks good uh, when you're not like over uh, adding too much like complexity to everything. So that's, should be pretty interesting. So I think at a certain point, like you can do some hand animation uh, post simulation to like force stuff to actually be a, a smooth, perfectly smooth sphere. But you want to get as much motion as you can in the simulation. Like you want it to get as close as possible to being um, back into a sphere. So I think my drag still might be a bit too, increasing a bit too high. So let's make that a bit um, slower, the amount that the drag will ramp up and uh, to reduce the overall particle scale just try to get um, just better looking results overall so basically reducing this particle separation you should start to see a little bit more detail it's increasing the particle count so as they're um, as they're like closer together or the gaps between them is reduced. You just have more of them. It might be, eh, could be okay. It's kind of hard to visualize some of the flip stuff because like once you end up rendering it, <laughs> surfacing it, rendering it as a fluid, it just looks, can look a lot different than, than it does as uh, particles.
This stuff is starting to be pretty interesting. Podzi111, how's it going? OpenCL is handling the pressure solve. Yeah, I have OpenCL turned on. Um, I have a feeling it doesn't help as much because like the particles, not everything is happening using your graphics card. So there's still a lot of copying that has to take place between the graphics card and the memory or the main memory or like your main CPU or whatever. Um, so it's not as, as uh, good to use as like Pyro is, um, but it still helps a little bit, I think. Chris RN, how's it going? I like your, you got a, a nice uh, charity symbol there. Yep, it's water today. <laughs> we'll see if we could get a W. So it's, I don't know, this is, um, I think it was looking, it's looking a little bit better now that we have more particles. Let's uh, take a look here. This moment right here where it's like collapsing in. Uh, so I'm just starting out with a sphere, doing some pop forces and stuff to get it spread apart. And then I'm just kind of pulling it back in. Um, I'm just doing, a, I'm just planning to do like a pretty simple um, pop force kind of based animation uh, with the fluid. Yeah, we'll see. It's uh, I'm just trying to keep stuff a bit simpler in, in terms of my setup. I feel like yesterday I got a bit uh, carried away. So I think kind of making uh, a bit of a mistake here using this time. It's kind of like a lazy... lazy thing to do with effects artists. It's like, you just want to use expressions for, for everything. Um, but I think I'm going to want to start hand animating it. So I increased my uh, particle separation to be quite um, low resolution. This is a little bit more, cause this is what I'm saying is like, I was missing some of these moments and stuff. Uh, and then I'm just going to add some hand animation to the drag so that I can really control it pretty well. So I think like at frame 49, um, I'm gonna set a keyframe. You could just click this brain at the bottom, turn off your brain, deactivate the solver, and then uh, setting the keyframes becomes a bit easier. You don't have to like, cook stuff unnecessarily. <laughs> Turn off your brain. <laughs> I wish that you could just have a button like that. You shut your brain off. Uh, so you set this keyframe from there to there. Um, I think this attraction, I might leave that being scaled at, at, uh, at the time. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I, there's a few other people streaming some Houdini. Um, kind of stuff, but I think I'm I'm the only one like really focusing on instructional stuff or very technical, like deep vex or time, like uh, or simulation stuff. Um, I know if you, if you follow Arvid, like he's another uh, Houdini guy, but he's more of lighting shading approach, but uh, he's been doing some Houdini stuff and like some pretty cool flip kind of, uh, pastries and uh, decorating like syrup and, and uh, honey and stuff like that with, with Flip. I feel like Twitch isn't organized that well right now where it's like finding other content or just finding people using Houdini. It's like it's not set up that way yet for uh, they don't have the category for, for Houdini. Seen people making games using Houdini too. Yeah, there was someone um, who's like XRC, XRA, maybe? XRA, someone else recommended um, 
Let me see if I can find him. So I got too much stuff going on. <laughs> I think it was XRA. Um, he was making games using Houdini for parts of it uh, and Unity for some parts as well and, and stuff like that. So I think this one is starting to feel a bit more clean, more um, just more controlled, more, I don't know, like purposeful, but I just don't have enough drag. Yeah, the, all these people were on Twitch. Um, Arvid, if you search, let me see. So this one's Arvid. Um, I don't know if I have the others stored in here. Let me see. Yeah, so this was the other one that he was using it for. He wasn't using Houdini all the time. Uh, I, like all these other people I think are just using Houdini uh, for portions of their workflow. But um, it's still cool to see how other people use it just as a supporting tool or anything like that. So I might need a little bit more attraction at the end. So I'm using this expression here to deactivate. I don't, I think that's not the case. I think I just need more uh, drag. This is like the classic um, mistake of just not enough drag and the attraction force will just create like a endless, it's always trying to reach a target and it can't, it's always like overcompensating. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. It's always uh, over correcting and it's never gonna um, end up where you want it to. So when you add enough drag to uh, push back against it, then it's just easier to, to control and get the, the actual result that you want. So yeah, I'm planning to use this with um, the standard kind of like gallery setup or whatever that I've been using for the other ones. My plan was to do more of the, oh, we already got, Arvid already did his water. It's been, he's blown by me. This is pretty cool. Um, so, so I'm planning just to stay with this like backdrop to to kind of have a similar setting or whatever for my entries. Um, oh, you found me on YouTube. Il you odd. Is that, is that how you pronounce it? Thanks for making the uh, the jump over to, to Twitch. But yeah, I'm just planning to make just Ilua. Did I say it right? Ilua? Um, so I'm just trying to make this into like a photography, like light booth kind of setup. Um, so that's my, my in intention with the rendering and lighting side of things. Um, I'm just trying to get some interesting motion happening right now. Um, so we have some previous attempts. I have this invisible sphere that I'm like pushing everything out 
trying to hit it, like collide with the perimeter, um, and then reform or rejoin into uh, like a single drop or a, a, a larger sphere. So over time, I have this attraction force that's just slowly ramping up as uh, the scene progresses. My initial rotational like outward force is getting turned off um, after frame 48 or two seconds into the simulation. And then I've also hand animated this drag. Um, so basically the more drag that you have in your um, simulation, the easier it is to kind of control things. Like the more robotic or the more, um, the less like overcompensation and stuff like that you'll get with, with everything. So it's getting a bit better now, um, actually like filling in. Without drag, if you try to attract things to the middle, you'll just end up with this endless like rotational thing because it's always trying to get, it's like moving in a direction and then it's just keeps updating and it will never reach its target. So this should be pretty good. I think we're getting close. Let's take a look at this. I have this like script that I'm running that is converting things to flipbooks. So it's just, it's feeling a bit weird right now. Um, might try to change this. View of these relationships. And then I'm gonna go. Uh, going a bit higher with the particle separation again, just to work <clears throat> more quickly. There's like specific key moments that I want uh, the animation to hit. So I'm just working at a, a lower resolution, higher particle separation to try to uh, nail those like uh, motions or parts of the simulation. I think it's pretty cool when it crashes up against everything. So I have my drag doing this hand animation. Um, I have a feeling my keyframes might be a bit off. Like I want it to be, the drag to be added very quickly right at the end. Um, maybe this attraction, gonna, I'm just gonna play around with this exponent. It was getting just a bit too dramatic. It was getting like ripped, ripped back in too quickly. So I want to keep kind of a clean edge around everything with this sphere that's, that uh, I just did the invert sign setting on the static object to treat it. Basically the inside of the sphere is air and then the outside is the boundary. Um, if you just do invert sign on static object, you can flip that relationship around. Just like making an object inside out basically for collisions. Um, this stuff is looking a bit better. This is why, like, originally stuff was just getting pulled in. 
inwards too quickly and it was feeling just kind of a bit janky, I guess, when you, like, it just seems like you haven't refined your, your simulation enough when you're like, horses are just too, uh, too, I don't know, splishy splashy or whatever. We might even need more drag at the end, but this, this could be nice if it like resolves. I think it's gonna get into the sphere. So I have enough drag where it's it's uh causing enough like friction or or uh air resistance that, that it's getting back in. This is pretty cool. You might just want some gradually more uh, drag. Turn off my, my brain again. And uh, I'm just gonna make another keyframe. Maybe. Might do a kind of, I don't know, like an S curve or a weird shaped curve like that. Um, let's go down a bit with the particle separation. And um, I'm just gonna save the scene. I think we could start with a flip just caching stuff. Um, so I usually clean up some of the extra attributes that are on these uh, flip particles. Like if I put down um, just a null or something like that. After a frame of simulation, you can see it's added uh, a bunch of extra attributes that the solver uses. You use Houdini Engine for it? For, for which thing? So I'm gonna save uh, for, for removing attributes. Let's do delete everything. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Barging into your conversation. Oh, okay, yeah, I saw the, the extra part. Uh, I'm just gonna do attribute rename. And uh, we'll keep P. Um, might do ID, if I'm going to use ID, uh, this will actually use like reseeding that will change, it can add or delete particles during the simulation. So you just want to go to behavior and turn on ID attribute. Um, and then I also just want the P scale. That should be good. Should just be flip particles, version one. Looks like it's not gonna let me save it. <laughs> some days it works, some days it doesn't. You guys have been having that problem with the save to disk in background. I feel like um, it's, yeah, it's just weird. You'll get lucky and it will work sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just gonna open up another Houdini session. Um, use this one to visualize the cash as it's going. So I just need to make sure this load from disk is on and uh, we have our stuff being saved. You just have to be a bit careful like editing two different versions of your, the same editing two different like sessions with the same version being open.
What did I miss? So I haven't uh, done too much crazy stuff today. This cannot go wrong. Um, I, I just added some pop forces to move a flip simulation around. Um, so I have it starting as a sphere, shooting out, colliding with an invisible sphere, and then just animating the pop forces so that it collects itself back into a uh, ball in the middle. So as my simulation is going, one of the things I can do is just uh, start with VDB from particles. Um, so I saved out the p-scale attribute, so it will know um, how big to, to treat the particles. I'm just increasing the, the resolution. Whoa, 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 Brando. Thank you so much for, for all the gifts. Got some, some gifts in the community. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's showtime. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Friday, got the gifters in the chat. Um, got some new subs. Yeah, I appreciate any uh, subs, gift subs, primers, anything like that. It helps the stream grow and uh, hopefully more people get the knowledge, get the subs. <laughs> so we'll just do a smooth. Get the gem. <laughs> So this smoothing operation, Gaussian is usually like too, too much, too blurry. Um, even with one iteration, like I'm losing all the droplets. So I'll do mean curvature flow um, or Laplacian, Laplacian. And those tend to preserve more of the features. This channel deserves to get super popular. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm thinking it just needs some more time. Uh, and I might, I was planning to do like these offline tutorials. I feel like those might get spread around a little bit uh, more easily. And then the hulai hit and I <laughs> didn't have any time to do anything else. I might tap out for a few weeks or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I feel like making some good offline tutorials would be the best way to promote it. Um, those tend to get passed around on like the blogs and stuff like that. Uh, whatever, I don't know if people even call them blogs anymore. Like the news feeds or the news sources. Like, So I was planning to make one for Redshift, like just in introduction to materials and lighting and stuff. I don't know. This stream is much better personally. Yeah, so the, the idea is that those offline tutorials would just get more exposure for the stream, which would then, uh, which would then, I don't know, it all kind of drives each other. It's like an entry point for people where they see this offline tutorial that's like a 20 minute thing. Like the, the streams are a bit, yeah, kind of, it's, it's like a, a gateway drug into the stream. Um, so, <laughs> So it's like you see a 20 minute video about Redshift with some nice looking images and you're like, that sounds like a good task to watch that and learn some stuff today. But if you're just a casual YouTube content consumer and you see like a three hour uh, video that's part one of three of an underwater bubble thing, then you're like, uh, I don't know about, I don't think I'm going to start. <laughs> I don't have an entire day to spend st doing that. But I think this, this stream is very valuable, just the discussions and the, the tips and stuff that get passed around in it. Um, edit the stream and archive it to be a smaller video and still a tutorial. Yeah, I think, I mean, at that point, like, I don't know, just on my end, it seems like it would be easier and quicker to just kind of re-record the, the, the stream as a tutorial um, instead of, I mean, you could just extract portions and stuff, but I think just properly doing it as a as an offline tutorial would be better. So all this, these uh, smoothing tools and stuff like that, 
They exist in the particle fluid surface, uh, but it's just a bit harder to, it's like a lot going on. Um, but basically checking this box, the same stuff is happening somewhere in here. There's a, the same node, the same VDB smooth is being used. Um, but I just usually will set things up this way uh, visually. I prefer to have these settings as an entire node instead of like a UI that I have to click around in and check different boxes or whatever. So that's why I'm doing it uh, this way. Um, so if we look, sometimes you like template your um, source particles. Like this is a good way to make sure. Looks like it's not happening, but um, if I reduce this particle radius too much, then um, you can see I'm missing certain particles. So sometimes just templating your, your particles before you surface them is a good way to, to make sure you're not losing too much or just keep track of what's going on. Um, for thin, thin sheets of fluid and stuff like that, it can be nice to actually decrease the particle radius scale. Um, then you might need more uh, voxel size to to preserve them. If you do it too much, you'll get like this lumpy stuff a bit too lumpy. Um, and then sometimes it works well if you do reshape SDF, dilate. Um, and then do another like broader kind of smoothing operation. Might be a bit too much, but using this, using these blurs like dilate and blur, you can kind of get additional fake surface tension that isn't in your original simulation. So because these are like meta balls getting uh, expanded and then smoothed, then you get some nice fake kind of effects or whatever. Just looks a little bit more like a fluid instead of just like dots or whatever. I don't know. Uh, so there's one thing you can do that works well. is basically these smoothing operations are um, doing the opposite of a dilate, like they're eroding or shrinking the surface. So to compensate for it, you do a dilate initially, and then you could do additional smoothings to thing, gather stuff up in one big mass and then blur it and shrink it so that it's bridged together in that kind of way. So I'm just gonna take these nodes I don't need that one. Copy them, control C, close this scene. Um, so I'd been working in a new one. This one was the one that I cached stuff out of. So that's what I mean by um, um, keeping track of what session you're using, not saving changes in both of them and then neither one is current. Like that's a very bad way to, to work. So I'm just going to take my main VDB sphere, or the main sphere, do um, VDB. Yes, yeah, so I've, I'll keep going. There should be a little bit more tricks, maybe. Um, you overcomplicated everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it tends to happen. Um, it's part of learning, I guess. So do VDB from polygons. Um, and then you'll see it's like a bit uh, faceted. So if you just do convert, this will make it higher resolution or whatever. So this is a primitive um, like data type. The VDB tools don't know about Houdini primitives. So it, under the hood, like converts. That's what this warning means, is it's converting to quads and triangles but it doesn't have any control over that conversion. So if you convert it first using higher level of details, then you get the smooth shape. 
Um, and then here, I can do a combine uh, with my collision. Like the, you want to do it at the very last step. And then you can be certain you'll get like a smooth uh, collision with, with the uh, sphere, with whatever you're colliding against. So just do intersection, um, and then it chops off just that little area. You can plug this into there just to make sure you're getting, this matches the resolution of the, uh, the other VDB. So instead of setting the voxel size or linking it with a channel, you can just connect it to um, another VDB and it will say, use that voxel size. And then it looks like I'm still getting some faceting here. Uh, you can keep going higher with those numbers. Uh, you can also just subdivide. Might need, an, whoa, not 12. Shoot, two. Whoa, 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 Brando. Gifting all over the place today. Thank you so much for helping me out here. Um, so we just do another subdivision and now we have like a really smooth one. Um, like now it's almost perfectly smooth or whatever. So with uh, reflections and refractions, it makes a big difference to have this actually smooth instead of like the little lumps will always make things look pretty unnatural. So that's pretty nice now. Um, just gonna try a few different, whoop, I need to go up here, turn on load from disk. Check out some different frames, my cache and everything like that. Looks like certain points it might have been a bit, it's like a bit blobby. Might want to go even smaller. This voxel size. Um, and then smooth it even more. I'm just gonna run another flipbook of that. Um, gonna be working out of that same backdrop, or the same uh, um, render like photography light booth setup that I was working with before. So I'm just gonna grab that from another uh, thing. So I'm new to Twitch and join just because of John. <laughs> what is this? What is what? <laughs> what is the platform Twitch? Uh, so I'll just go into my wind file from, from yesterday and grab my lights and setting and stuff like that. <laughs> this gift tier. Um, so that's like a gift, you're gifting, a, he's gifting subscriber subscriptions to other people in the community or in the chat. So the other viewers that are present at this time, um, they get the like one month subscription to my channel. Uh, so then when you tune in, you might not see an ad, like when you go to the link. I don't usually run ads or, or stuff like that. Um, you get some extra badges and stuff like that. And then the more subscribers channels have, it helps them grow or just become more uh, noticeable, more, more easy for other people to find uh, and stuff like that. It's a very grassroots stuff that we're dealing with here on Twitch. I don't know. It is controlled by Amazon, but it is, uh, they do have some nice ways to, for people to like build communities and stuff like that. Yeah, you could read more about it. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it is hard to, to figure it out at first though. So I'm just grabbing all of this stuff, uh, except this thing is my effect. This is just my environment. I have a couple of lights. 
uh, material for this backdrop and stuff like that. I'm just gonna copy Control C. Um, this thing over here is so flip booking a little bit. I'm just I'm just gonna cancel it. Start working over here. We tried to move into rendering a little bit quicker today. Got lost yesterday. It's like two two hours in or something like that. It's like all right, let's might start thinking about rendering stuff right now. So the flip tool, the shelf tool will make these extra nodes. I usually just kill, delete them or whatever. I'm a, oof. I might have deleted too many of them. Let me just control Z. No, I think that that was good. I don't want either of them. Uh, this is my main effect. It has everything in the one network. Um, then I can press control V to get my nodes, my, my lighting rendering set up from the other thing. Um, I'm just gonna do a transform, whoops, transition, the new one, transform, um, just to reposition. I think I want to rotate Z and uh, See what happens. So I had made my other backdrop pretty big the last time. I might start with it a bit smaller again. Let's take a look at the flipbook. So I'm missing some some details or whatever, but I think in motion it's it should work pretty well, at least as a starting point. Um, we'll see what happens. So I could just link up this with my main um, thing to set it, reposition it a bit quicker without having to wait for the surface to cook every frame. But flip your favorite. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I decided just to do a simpler kind of effect or, or thing today. Um, so I've just made a, a pretty straightforward um, flip simulation that's like shooting out, collecting back as a blob, and then I'm going to force it back into a sphere. So it's using these controls, I've kind of switched I kept doing this looping, like continuous animation or effect or whatever like that. Um, it might be, it might be faster with plot fluid. I mean, the simulation didn't take terribly long. Um, generally, I don't know. With all the particle fluid effects, it seems like the meshing process is always the slowest process for everything. Um, but I've always found pop fluid just a bit harder to dial in like the surface tension and stuff like that. Like it works super well for uh, condensation droplets and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've tried it a few times, but um, I've had a hard time controlling like the, the surface tension with it. I've done some simple grooming tools. I've never done a ton of stuff with it. But um, they seem a lot better than any other grooming uh, tools in any other software. So I don't know, like doing a rotation. Maybe I just haven't spent enough time with that pop fluid node. I think this is better spacing front on. Hitting the, am I hitting the ground here? I think I'm good. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's there is some useful aspects of the grooming tools that you might be able to use for other purposes. Um, especially like the wire solver and doing like hair simulations or whatever like that. But for the most part, yeah, it's like unless you're most companies, that's a different position, like a, char a creature TD or character TD. Um, then you're doing like the cloth simulations and hair simulations or accessories for characters. Um, then I don't know, it's usually it's either like a different person as well doing the groom, like a modeler or I don't know, a, a, a different artist will do the, the grooms. Um, the pop fluid was that I couldn't have mutual collisions like feedback scale. Yeah, so I think you just have to, I don't know, either do like two different simulations and have a one-way uh, interaction or try to force, like, replicate that force in your other simulation, like you fetch the, the velocities from your, your flip part, pop fluid particles that way. So let's... Let's just put the shader on this and see what happens. So we'll get the Redshift Material Builder. Um, set it to water. I usually don't start with any dispersion. And then we'll just toss it right into the uh, the material so we're probably going to want um this looks a, kind of good i don't know we're probably going to want um motion blur velocity blur but we'll, we'll add that later on and then i think my camera depth of field is a bit off So you could just click with Redshift in the render view to set the, the depth of field. That's pretty nice. Um, let's just see what each light is doing. So I might... I might just turn off the bounce card to start with. Um, this backdrop with my other scenes, I was a bit like less concerned with how it was set up. But here, because we're doing like water and it's very reflective and refractive. Um, let me go back to what that was. Like if I slim it down a lot horizontally, the background in, in the render view won't change, but I'll start to get more black areas at the edges of things. So that's pretty important like with Flip because it helps you read the, the form, or the definition of things. So like if I didn't have this black line here, um, just, I, would, I just wouldn't be able to tell what was happening. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Pop Fluid is more suitable for a lower scale Sims, but it's a bit slow. Yeah, I'm, so I, my experience was it's always like works very well for little droplets, like droplets on leaves, um, condensation on a bottle, drips on, a, on the lens of your camera or stuff like that. Um, like any droplet based effects, but then trying to do like this effect might work well with pop fluid, but if you're trying to do like a body of water and stuff like that, it might not work as well with, uh, with pop fluid. I don't know, I haven't used it a ton. Um, so another thing that you can do, like, I don't know how much I want to do it, but uh, you just do this volume um, from camera, get the camera that I'm rendering from. Um, this way it's just making a volume that's like constrained to the, the camera's uh, rustum or the camera's view. So you can use this to group uh, geometry. And 
and then this ISO surface, I think you just have to raise it up a little bit. And then if you just go into your transform selector, then you'll actually see the group selection in the viewport. You can change the uh, the padding or the margins like with these window X, Y, Z. This is like uh, over scan kind of on your camera. Um, so this is just a nice way to crop geometry like in your camera's field of view. So I might want a little bit of padding. Um, but I'm just trying to get it even tighter in, in with things. So I'd, I have a lot more black area. Um, just more contrast and stuff like that in the fluid. Let's take a look at my lights. We'll get another render going. Um, I might just try to turn off one, one or two of them. Or not, I guess two of them would be both of them. Let's try turning. Maybe the other one was already off. Yeah. So let's just try switching them. Maybe I'll just move my uh, render view to, to just look through that light. We'll just try a very classic like top down um, position. Then just as I'm moving it closer, I just need uh, more or less less intensity or whatever. This is kind of a balance between uh, those black areas and the, the lighter areas. Then sometimes switching to disc, you'll just get better looking reflections because there's no like sharp edges or corners uh, in your light. Uh, yeah, I could add caustics. Um, I'm not gonna play around with those until the end. Uh, they don't work in the IPR render view of, of, of Redshift. So it's just a, it's like a final touch or whatever that I would add. Um, so I'm just gonna make the lights a bit smaller. Let's see what a, another frame looks like with this. I'd zoom in more with the camera. Yeah, it's like, when it's out filling the full circle, I felt like it was, uh, I guess, zooming in should help. So I'll just move it up a little bit. I think this is a good composition. I think zooming in should help me get more, more of the uh, dark area because I linked it up to crop the background with it. We could do, we could do a tint, but I think, like sometimes you do a small tint of blue for water, but I don't think we need it too much. Kool-Aid, you want it to be a Kool-Aid, a sports drink? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, I also don't know about these models, like sometimes extinction. I think this one's going the other way. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this. It's like a Powerade drink. This is based off of like the thickness of the surface. Sometimes people add it for for water, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to turn it off. Um, another thing you can do is like play around with this IOR. Um, it's not physically accurate anymore, but sometimes it, if it looks better, you can do it. Um, I might go up a, a little bit higher there at 1.38 or something. Maybe just a bit of roughness. Just depends how much... Uh, If you have this roughness at completely zero, sometimes everything is just way too crisp or way too sharp. So let's try to add the... Um, let's try to add... What went into the wrong one? Let's try to add the velocity. So I deleted um, velocity from my particles. I'm just going to make a reference copy of the transform that I'm doing uh, so that these velocities are calculated in the same space, like same rotation, same orientation, and stuff like that. Um, should match by ID because my point count's changing. And then uh, we should just be able to do the attribute transfer. Just get velocity. And now we have velocity. Could do, inspect it. Looks reasonable enough. Um, and then just over here, I think we just do mesh deformation blur from velocity attribute uh, on the redshift node. Um, Turn this on. I think we want these other. We don't need to worry about that one, but um, we should see some more blurring here. So this can just help things look a little bit more photographic. Um, I might go to my camera. Sometimes for uh, like nice looking photography or whatever. I, I already did it for the last scene, um, but I sometimes whack the shutter down to like 0.25, uh, just just to preserve some sharpness or a little bit of crisp kind of details. Do we have it? Um, might be ready to whack in these caustics and see what happens. Uh, so this light, I'm not using um, I'm just gonna delete this light we just go over here to caustic photons um, so the redshift you have to use this is the only way to make caustics is to use the photon mapping um, then you have to set your objects like my cyclorama uh, visibility, you have to tell it to, uh, I guess you have to just sell it to cast. So anything that's water under visibility, cast caustics photons. Um, and then redshift. Um, photon mapping. Just increase this. Caustic search radius is like how blurry or um, sharp they'll be. If you, you just need to find the right number for this value such that it um, 
doesn't look too noisy or grainy, but also if you have it too big, things will just be too blurry. Um, I think we're good with those settings the way they are. Um, see if we get any caustics. So it's doing, it has to do like a pre-pass um, or whatever to generate the, the caustic gem, the points. We got them. So they don't look too good uh, right now. I might just go down and try to reduce them even smaller. Uh, it might be my light might be too big. Or um, might just not be in a good position. <laughs> so this is, it gets very difficult to set up the uh, caustics at, at a certain point because um, it's so dependent on the size of your light and all that stuff. Sometimes you could just add a secondary light that is only doing the caustics. If you really want to art direct them and, and get them looking how you want them to. This it could be nice when, when things are in motion and stuff like that. Um, let's just try going even smaller. Go back up to the, the bigger number. Let's try it again. So it's a dif difficult circumstance. Like after cropping in tighter, I want these caustics to lie right there or maybe even further behind this uh, sculpture, the shape. So I might want to move my light like closer to the camera and point it towards things. Um, zoom, maybe not zoom, but dolly in. So I just have a wider lens. I think this, yeah, we could try that. Let's, uh, we just go back into the live render. We don't get caustics, but we can still, we know roughly where they are. Um, we'll go back to our like 50 millimeter lens. Maybe go in this much. I'm gonna go back into that light. Then I'm just going to center it. The wrong axis. Center it this way. Just said so that the shadow is symmetrical, the shadow and caustic once we uh, add that in. Um, so this is looking a bit better, but then my. Uh, It's what I was saying with the light, when you move it too close to things, like you might want the caustic to lie behind everything. Um, one of the things you can do with this, these lights is change like the spread of things. Kind of like barn doors or whatever, like the little metal lights on the, uh, the edges of like area lights or whatever. Um, so I'm just getting like a little bit of vignetting. We also had that ramp that we were using. I turned it off for the last scene because we were kind of like baking in the uh, fall off. We might want to turn it back on here. And then with redshift and caustics, it always kind of ends up a bit weird. Um, 
sometimes you do want like a little bit of shadow intensity otherwise your caustics and stuff is purely just like additive if that makes sense like generally with caustics you see some darkening and some brightening um so the only way to really take it or, or put it in is to do that i think the floor just every everything should be darker so in this background I was going in and just whacking the diffuse up or down, kind of as like a global uh, backdrop intensity or whatever. Let's see how these caustics look. Yes, yeah, so I think the floor grayer should help with this. So I could either adjust it with this ramp key point um let's just take a look so I'm j i went out of the i went out of the uh, offline render or whatever to just more quickly like evaluate this stuff Let's try this and maybe adding like another, I don't know if this is going to be, start to look a bit too silly, but maybe like artificially darkening. Just a little bit. Kind of looks natural, not too artificial. <laughs> Vegan nuts. <laughs> Getting maximum drama in our render today. So I did another offline render, uh, fire some more caustic points and see what our photon points and see what our caustics look like. So we might have made them too small. Um, it's hard to tell though. Might, um, might do a quick, some quick renders and see what uh, things look like. So if I just go to my render settings here, um, we're pretty, all the settings are pretty low. So it should be good just for, for examining our results and seeing what they look like. But I'm not doing GI just because our scene is so simple. We don't need, uh, I think the white in the ramp is still too bright. Yet yeah, might be a bit odd uh, clipping out like that. Um, Maybe just go down overall, everything darker. This could be nice. I'm thinking maybe making the light wider could be interesting. It's like it's blurry on the edges. We'll just save this as a new version. Um, let me see where this file is being put. Maybe I just want it like that. Uh, could do it, not not to mplay. Um, so I'll just use this HQ. This way, we should get some frames pretty quickly, uh, and just see what our our stuff looks like in motion. 
the settings are pretty low. Uh, we have a lot of noise because of the motion blur, depth of field. Um, usually I'll take the um, max samples higher and then the noise so air threshold will take care of uh, that graininess, but just for doing a quick test, we should uh, <clears throat> start getting results pretty quickly. So I could probably just do this RV. Um, renders, water. Looks like none of these frames have finished. So the caustic pre-pass is a bit time consuming. We got one frame. This looks pretty good. We ended with some nice proportions for the start frame. So we might want to do like some artificial smoothing, uh, like I was saying, just so that I've set things up to loop. Um, if we just go into our scene and um, just going to take a look at the, so I could just visualize the particles and set my render flag after the meshed surface. Go back into the camera. Um, so if we just look at the animation. Like I'm saying, we might want to artificially smooth or uh, deform everything to to start in like a perfect sphere without anything happening, um, and then ending on that same kind of uh, composition. So if I just go here, um, just going to hide everything else. So with particles, it's going to be harder to achieve this. But with VDBs, we have the smoothing operations and stuff like that. So we'll be able to, um, not sure why this usually doesn't highlight like that. Um, so if I just do another VDB uh, smooth, SDF, we want to do it still before we do our collision cropping or whatever. Um, and then this one, we do want to use the Gaussian or something, stack VDB smooth instead of iterations. So I'm doing different operations, um, curvature medium value, and then this one is doing Gaussian. So to really like <clears throat> art direct or control these, um, I want to use different, different things, yeah. But if, if it was all the same thing, you could get away with doing um, just iterations, but this way I think is more art directable or controllable. And then um, usually do blend shapes to loop animation, but I never tried it on SDF, only density. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, depends um you can do the blend shape like if you do time blend or the that uses blend shape node underneath i think sequence blend um this has settings for doing voxel blending but i think like we could just try it using this and see what happens um and then i've never had that much success like animating these these values smoothly like it always jumps or appears a bit clicky um so if you want to fix that or blend between them smoothly um if you just connect it with a volume wrangle uh so these sdfs or vdbs you could just modify them using this volume wrangle and then uh automatically it will if you check this on all of the volumes will be treated as this density attribute. If I just do density plus equals 0 0.01, you see we're shrinking things. So if I change this to um, float, 
parameter, just do blend. Um, you can see that this way I'm, it's kind of like I've created my own like dilate or erode operation. Um, it's just a bit hard to control because you have the bandwidth, like these half band voxels is saying I only have that many active region before I run out of voxels. So that's why it disappears. Um, but we don't need to worry too much about that. What I'm actually going to do is just say, take this density and lerp between the density value um, and the second or the auxiliary input. Just get that using volume sample. Um, and then this blend amount will be like a, a blend shape parameter. So now we just morph between uh, these two VDBs, but it happens smoothly. You try to hand animate these values because it's like an integer iteration. Uh, it doesn't, that doesn't happen very smoothly. <laughs> it's a gem. <laughs> Clip it and file it away. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's a good tip. Uh, I think we have some more frames finished from the farm. So just setting this up at the start, I'll have a little bit better um, looking shape. This caustic stuff is kind of cool. It has like focusing like a lens. Uh, we'll see what happens. So moist. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know how happy I am with the, the underlying animation. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how good it turns out. Um, so what, what I want to do here is just keyframe it to this. Um, value I might I'm just gonna flip these around actually so that we're starting at one because I don't want to do that so you can see I'm running into that activation the active voxels um, if that does happen they have this activate SDF node you can use this to expand your uh, area that you can modify things. I'm just gonna go back to working this way. Uh, so we'll start with zero and then we just need over a few frames. If I go to frame um, five, we'll just have this morph to one. So everything's sloshing around and starting to move. So it kind of, it will make sense that it's becoming less, uh, less uh, perfect. I might just expand it over a few more frames actually. I don't know, sometimes when you go these too, too, dr too drastic of a change too quickly, it will look like a glitch in your animation. Um, and then we need to do something similar to the end frame. And we might want to do it the same way, but uh, if I just do a time shift, um, hold the first frame over here, then I might be able to do another deformer, blend deformer, um, but just going the opposite way with this one. So just going to delete my keyframes. Um, we'll start at zero and then at the end of the scene, frame 240 or 10 seconds in or whatever, we can go over to one. So it looks like this one, we do need the um, activate. We should be good. Uh, this thing isn't too slow to, to use, so it's not a big deal to, to leave it in. It will be running the whole time, but it, it should be okay. Um, we can take another look at this. 
so this is what I was more interested in when I was I spent a lot of time getting this like tendril and then eventually it's gonna string and sheet apart um, so that should be pretty cool we got our seamless transitions worked out um, getting velocity transferred over I don't know if I feel like it, it worked out well it got where it just worked out to be 10 seconds this thing I might looks like it is causing some issues um, they do have this like renormalize SDF sometimes that can fix those issues um, sometimes if you do just VDB resample. Looks like I'm messing things up too much. So I think what I want to do this could just be a bad <laughs> a bad idea. Um, let's just try doing the sequence blend at the end and see it, see how well it works. It's a bit more clicky, clicky or poppy. Um, they have VDB morph. They do, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't work with like zero to one values, if you know what I mean. Like you need to make a velocity field for it and then it, um, or th you don't need to make a velocity field, but if I say this is my source and this is my target, um, it works in like this time step thing for whatever reason. So it's, you're never going from like lurping between zero and one you're just like i don't know it doesn't <laughs> it should it should work better in in theory i guess but i've always had issues with it as well um i might be I might be activating like the wrong thing. Um, let's see what happens. If I expand the region of like this, looks like that's not going to work. Um, let's. Oof, still getting more problems. I might have led you guys astray here with... <laughs> I don't know, because it can't be... It looks like it does not enjoy using this. Um, oh, so I, I, I might have flipped this one around. Un ungem that tip. <laughs> I set it up wrong. Um, this, this is going to be a problem. Um, so I want it like that. Um, I want to go into manual mode. I want this to be uh, zero. This one to be one. So I think that was the problem. Like it was always using the smoothed um, region. And then this one, this input over here, I can, should be able to fix it this way.
Not a good idea. Something happened here. I don't know how it got so so slow. Whoops. I did something wrong. So it might be getting a bit too low to the floor. But it also, I don't know, it could be kind of nice. It's like stopping when it hits something. So I think this is just slow because it was like too big of a region. You would blend the particles into a sphere by slowly normalizing the points. Yeah, that could be a good idea uh, to selectively morph the ones that are that are on the perimeter of things. Um, I was thinking as well, like I could just do it at the very end of everything. Um, so I might try that. Like the final mesh. So I'll just take this code. Um, instead of doing a distance, we're going to be doing the position. Um, I have to switch it to a vector. You could even get rid of that. Houdini already knows it's a vector. Um, normalize. D, and then make our extra parameter. So this way I'm just doing everything after it's converted. You can blend shape with particles. Um, so it will work with this. Uh, I think I deleted it. But this sequence blend, because it has the um, match by ID. So with particles, it, it will work. Um, I think when you do bucket render, you can see caustics. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was uh, switching to this other render that wasn't the offline render. Um, so I think I'm. I don't know if I want to blend. I, so I definitely want to get rid of that lumpiness at the first and last frame. Um, I'm just going to set it up. We need to get out of our, because <laughs> we're normalizing instead of blurring, we need to get out of this uh, deformer a lot quicker, I feel like. Yeah, so you can you can do it actually on the particles, but I was thinking that um, maybe just doing it at the end would be even cleaner because I'd get this. Like if I did it on the particles, you could still get um, some bumps going from BDB and then back to everything like that. Um, so that's why I set it up like that. But you might still want to do it. It can work on the end, um, just working on the meshed surface. Um, I'm just going to copy this, move it all the way over to the end. Um, and then we just need to flip this one around as well. Um, we might just want to do it with the particles as well to make sure the motion is like more preserved. Um, this is like doing it two times to <laughs> to fix a couple different issues, I think. Um, maybe we want this sequence blend. Um, this will match the points by the ID, and then I'm just going to make a 
frame holds for the first frame. Maybe it's not. It's because there's like too many uh, IDs that aren't found. Um, like there's unmatched points that got created during the simulation from the reseeding. So I think we can do it this way. That looks pretty smooth. Um, that should be good. And then, like Steve was saying, um, we only want this blend parameter to, to affect ones that are close to the, the edge of the shape. So I think if I modify this blend, so I'm just going to remove that parameter and just do a blend variable, um, put it there. And then if I look at my color, put something into color. It's the length of my point position. Um, I don't want to modify this. Then I should be able to remap this or just use the fit function. Um, do like 0 0.7 and 1. Then you could see I have a black and white uh, coloring happening for the shell. Maybe this one to be like 0.9. Um, so if I multiply blend by this number, then I'll only smooth or normalize things like that. So this should be good enough. I don't know if I'm missing too much of the outside now. Let's go back into the camera. Um, and then just take a look. I think it will 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 uh, line up. So I don't know my light. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a Kim yet. It's a, it's a, it's a, da <laughs> it's good enough for a daily Houdini submission, I guess. Um, yeah, I wish the, the caustic points thing is kind of slow. The pattern on the, on the ground is pretty interesting. What do you guys think? You have any more advice? Sorry, I kind of led you astray with this. Morphine <laughs> took me some time to, to decide what the best way was to do that. You think there's anything um, it looks cooler from a different angle 
I was trying it. Um, you with Hula, you have to go though. You can. Yeah, it's a bit fast for simulating getting everything looking good within one day. Um, I was trying some stuff like with it, like like that, but. Um, Thought the sim like having it some perfectly symmetrical could be cool. Um, could always do it like from this side. Could be cool. Boom. Let's uh, see if I crash my computer <laughs> rendering. This is like rendering stuff on the farm right now and then it's happening here. Yeah, I think it's um, right now the way that the impact reads, like visually it's hard to tell that stuff is stretching out. So it just looks a bit odd when uh, stuff hits the top and things go like closer and further from camera. It's, it just looks like an error in the render instead of like things are getting further and closer to you, I guess. Um, the only problem is we miss this uh, cheating, but I guess it doesn't even look that good in the end. <laughs> Let's see what what this uh, looks like here. I think my depth of field might be a bit too strong to... Uh... I'm just gonna go into the live update. GM explode, how's it going? This could be, this could be more interesting. Um, not, not neat here. Ooh, from Atomic. When, uh, what, what was it that we worked on together? It was allied? Or it was um, Tyler Britton? Britton? Was that Tyler? <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. So I think we just might need, to, if I hand select this here, you're in Montreal. It's probably better. I just changed the focal plane of the camera. It's probably better to be in Montreal than <laughs> where I am right now. With the the lockdown here hasn't been handled that well. Um, our our case numbers have been skyrocketing recently, but I don't know if we want to maybe like animate the focal plane. Um, Raphael gave me my Twitter. <laughs> that was very nice of, of uh, Raphael. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out a good way to um, build this and promote it better and stuff like that. But uh, so it's a, hopefully more and more people will will figure out about it. Um, that's good to see. Good, to, good, to, good of you to stop in and say hi and everything. Um, so I'm just going to try to focus this light a bit more like we should be seeing more um, shadows and stuff like that on the ground if we're predicting where the caustics are going to be. Do some discord challenges. But yeah, we'll see if um, after the Hulai stuff winds down, give people a bit of a break to, to, to collect themselves. But uh, yeah, that's a good idea. It'd be a better way to um, do some of the other uh, lectures or like topics that I've been covering, so other people are like more motivated to to try it out themselves.
homework that is fun. Yeah, I was thinking of that conceptually. It's the, it's the same thing, but I didn't want to call it that because then it has a bad... Uh, <laughs> people have a bad reaction to it. So this is maybe better from moving the light down into the front and everything. Um, let's take a look at one of these frames with caustics. Oh my goodness, it's already two and a half hours. <laughs> I, I went in today with the plan, I'm like, I'm just gonna do flip with pop forces, I'm not going to over, over uh, think things too much like I did yesterday, but the time still, still flies by. So I think maybe this, this orientation here might be a bit better. It looks like my caustics have gotten pretty, uh, pretty hot. We might just need to Let's try turning the light down. I don't know if it's too, it might just be like too close. The smaller you make the light as well, like that will kind of focus the caustics and make them sharper. Yeah, you think the side view is better? This one frame is, <laughs> I should just submit it as one frame instead of the animation. Um, I think my light is just a bit too close. So if I go back into my light, um, I think it's gonna be better getting the caustic like right below it. Um, so it'll go a little bit more intense. And uh, maybe something like that. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, let me go back into this live render. Um, I think my light is a bit odd how it's uh, reflecting like that. I just moved it a bit more overhead. I'll make it a lot smaller. Something like this could be okay. Um, try one with caustics and kind of just see how that looks. And that, that's probably gonna be winding stuff down uh, at that point. So it looks like the caustics are a bit like too bright still. Um, it could make the background even darker. I'm in a pretty weird territory right now with just exposures and stuff like that. Um, you can also just control it this way where this is like specifically controlling the caustic, um, just the intensity of that effect. The, those lights. No, this isn't, I don't believe this is Asus. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. I was using it, 
was using it before, but then submitting it to side effects was just a mess to bake in uh, and have it looking the same. I'm gonna try even smaller stuff. Yeah, I don't know, it just seems... <laughs> It seems pretty difficult to get Asus, like, the look to match and to get it baked in when you're sending it to someone else. Like, if you're at a big place with a, a solid color pi pipeline, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to have everyone on the same page and stuff, but for someone working by themselves, I think it's a bit harder to, uh, to set it up or to, to make sure everything's working okay. So. Redshift has this um, photographic exposure. You can kind of do tone mapping and you can get some of the way there that, like, I don't know. I, I, I've found it a little bit easier to do it this way. No, I didn't do the other uh, <laughs> Ulai challenges for today. It should not. Um, should I, should I examine them? Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I have the other versions and stuff, but it just, it was causing too more problems than, than I was willing to put up with for them. Yeah, you could link me some. So this might be... Pretty cool. Um, I don't know, this depth of field is like pretty extreme, so it's starting to make this, the caustic's like overly blurred. Um, let's see what happens if we just get the camera. I'm just gonna make my uh, f-stop super high to kind of, this is just like disabling depth of field essentially. Where are these, uh, where are you, which chat are you linking these in? Discord? Trying to find it now. I could always, I could just pull it up, go through it. Yes, I think, um, I think reducing the depth of field is helping. Otherwise it was just looking a bit too much. Like I'm already getting stuff that's pretty soft, so there's no need to make it even softer. Um, you could even go to this light and like, make it even smaller. And then we should start to get like some razor sharp um, kind of caustics there. Let's just crack it open here. Have to just go for them. Um, water. This guy's I saw it, I think he's in Japan or something. He was posting it pretty uh, early in the day or late last night for me. This thing is pretty cool. Like the cinematography of it is, uh, I think it's like a projectile going in into a water and then he trailed the velocity or something like that. So doing the, doing the um, light a lot smaller, I'm getting, these are almost too sharp. It's like razor sharp caustics. Um, they might be. Let's just go with like 0 0.06 for the size of my light. Um, we'll try another render. But yeah, that one was, I was really happy with that. Uh, this one was, I saw it through, it was a bit uh, playful. I saw a lot of people just joking around with their submissions. Some guy yesterday for wind was uh, the, the guy uh, farting, just passing gas. This one's pretty good. The lighting is, is pretty nice on it. This is a good white water. It's a monster cache. Oh, he did a, a breakdown. Maybe, if he was just 
He just recorded this in his OBS and then <laughs> turned it off too quickly. This is pretty cool. Ooh. Secrets. I don't know how he's getting these blocks. That might be like disturbance or something. I saw this one in the Discord. It's pretty pretty good with the um I really like the little light aberrations. Like the little rainbow or whatever. I don't know if that was um is Pavel in here right now? I think I did check the earth renders. I didn't I don't know if I did them all on stream. Um This one is a pretty cool concept. Just doing uh fish going from animated particles into uh fluid. Pretty cool. Oh, this was yours, Cornyan? You go by Cornyan or Pavel? This, uh, how did you do this little trick? This color aberration was baked into your light or you did it with the uh, dispersion? Pavel Cornyan. You did this color attenuation with um, changing the, the light has that rainbow kind of thing baked into it. It's a nice Mobius strip or whatever. This one's pretty cool. I wish the sun wasn't uh, <laughs> burning out. It's kind of like a banana or something. But this water is looks delicious. Ooh, it's <laughs> a cool concept. This one was pretty nice. I don't know, he, he should have rendered it. Like it'd be this one if you rendered it um, the way that these particles were. Um, just with like solid shaded particles or something. I feel like this thing would look amazing. Just seeing those sh shading like shadows or, and, and stuff like that. This one, he could have done the underwater concept. I, I don't know how he made this. He draw it, drew it, uh, stenciled it. It's a, this is a nice concept overall. Ooh. Depth of field. <laughs> Let's go. He did a, this guy did a better job with the sun to get it, uh, more like tone mapped or whatever better. It's a nice, nice concept. It's pretty cool. Ooh, the air bender, the water bender. So I don't know if this is a bit too sharp. I think it's okay. Um, I might just even want to decrease my caustics. There's so many submissions here. It's too, it's too many to go through. I need to maybe speed them up a bit. This one I was seemed pretty cool. This was like the alchemy uh, symbol or whatever. Sorry if I'm skipping over anyone's that's in here. I'm doing a speed run. This is like the Zelda Wind Waker kind of style of shading. It's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so I think just changing my caustic intensity uh, and I'm just getting managing like the uh, colors highlights and stuff like that a little bit better so let's see another frame one thing I was thinking I might add is like a time remap so that this other stuff is sped up more we don't need it I don't know I might offline I might do some like editing to get stuff uh, timed out a little bit better. This thing's pretty cool. Ballistic. Ooh. I was thinking about doing a ripple 
effect, like seeing the, the raindrops splash around, but it seemed like it was just, uh, I'd seen a lot of other people do it with like substance and unity. I didn't want to completely copy it. It's a nice frame. I don't know, like maybe I want a little bit more intensity in the caustics. Yeah, certain, like certain frames. That's what I was saying with the time remap, I might just expand, uh, slow down, do like a bullet time effect for, for this portion of the simulation when it's really interesting. And then the other parts just speed those up a bit. Ooh. Flip approach, ripple solver driven by pops. It's a nice style. This is like PlayStation 2 blue. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, this Redshift is really good for doing this kind of uh, atmospheric haze stuff. Vegan Nuts, this is you, right? This is a pretty cool uh, mixing. The 2D simulations are great because they like run so quick. And then the detail, like it just, the detail you get with them always looks really cool. One thing you can do with these is um, render them out orthographically as like a texture and then use it to do like iridescence in the shader for like oil, like soap film on a bubble. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. The marble is, uh, yeah, it's a delicious. I want to be served up some nice uh, cheeses and wines on this, on these marble. <laughs> I guess cheese isn't vegan. It can't do that. I don't know what's happening here. The star. Ooh. The nice scratching. I was also thinking about doing like an ice cube, like in this kind of setup, but I figured a simulation would be uh, more fun to do. This is 2D or 3D simulation. Ooh, this is the redshift glint. This is a pretty nice one. I feel like I'd like to see some more surface tension, like tendrily, blobby type of stuff. So the flip, it always just feels like so sharp, like glassy, even not because of the IOR, just because of the, uh, like there's too many sharp pointed uh, tentacles. What is this? <laughs> he added some sound. He did his own Foley work. It's like uh, chemicals, like the atomic, the atomic structure. Ooh, it's a nice lighting setup. It's always my nightmare is doing this kind of flip stuff on the on ground. Like you need a wet map. Like it just never physically looks right because they should be like. Um, there should be like friction and then it just, it, it will always, it's very difficult to, to simulate that kind of stuff. So this is, this frame is kind of cool as well. Um, let's see what it looks like as a flat sheet. So we'll do this render, I'll do one more page of this submissions and I think I'm gonna call it after that getting late into the day you got it upside down <laughs> this is a nice caustics he did it <laughs> under the water element symbol oh he wanted his the triangle to be flipped around um but yeah i don't i don't know if he did this caustics with the houdini like photon mapping tools he was doing some some tricks lemonade so it feels like stop motion almost. 
I don't know, because it's like the other stuff is jittering. The nice color mix. I feel like this, if I was to make a still frame, I'd use this frame instead of this one. This is a lot more uh, appetizing. It's like a horchata, lemonade horchata mixture. 9.59 Eastern. Um, I think all these times are in Eastern, right? Yeah, I saw Arvid's, he did a pretty cool concept. I don't know if he's doing this with a static object or something. One minute before it closes. So you're you're talking about the wind one, Jeff? Because it hasn't. Ooh, nice. It hasn't been nine fifty nine. You're talking about uh, which sub which category for nine fifty nine? <laughs> you're already late. C-K-I-S-E-D. -C this is a nice tension. Ooh. It's pretty cool. That would have been a good idea, I feel like, just doing, um, just even having, like, a flat wall with, uh, Primitive shapes like crashing through it or some nice fruits, some bananas or stuff going through your... Ooh. Pretty cool. It's like a rainbow. I think this would be cool to, uh, to see it with like actual lighting. Like if this was blurred, like a, just a, a splash or something like that. rise. I feel like it's hard to um, to set this up. Ooh, <laughs> got a leak. It's uh, like the the way that flips work is that it will tr just always try to kill particles. Like you might have to do divergence or you have to use a pump or something like that. This is yours? This one was amazing. I think I saw it. Yeah, so you did, um, like, you, you made a rotation matrix to stretch and transform the noise across the, uh, the tube. I feel like that's a good, very good way to go with volumes, usually. Like, you get a ton of detail. Getting, like, you meant the earth bus, <laughs> looking at the wrong one. Where, I don't know where it went. Earth. Oh, somehow it didn't load. It's broken. <laughs> Maybe, uh... Let me see what happens here. Ah! Oh, you won, didn't you? With this one. This one was amazing. This is like a, a photograph. <laughs> oh, this one isn't yours. Yeah, this one was uh, was pretty cool. Yeah, so it's mantra displacements. It's like the Vor Vornoy or Whirly noise. Just the composition of it's really cool. It's like a fine painting. I should make this the Houdini 19, 18.5 splash screen. Yeah, um, I mean, you might be able to do this kind of stuff with, um, with Redshift. Like you can still do displacements at render time and there's noises in there. You don't have as much flexibility, but you can, uh, maybe we'll do something a stream with like redshift displacements at some point. You get cool, cool looking stuff. The mantra is nice. It's just very slow to even with those displacements and stuff to work with. Um, 
So you can as well just use this overexposure to, to adjust the caustic points. I don't know if... I don't know if like my search radius? I feel like it's already so small. I don't know why it's... Um, usually I would start to see the individual particles and stuff at some point. So this is probably probably ended after this render um, or I, I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> yeah, so this, all right, I lied. We're gonna do a, another render. Uh, this is like that threshold that I was talking about where you, um, you just wanna find that like balance of particle caustic point size basically it's shooting a bunch of particles from the light through your water onto the ground and when you have it too small um, you get the graininess and then if you I don't know if I wanted to do another one already um, when you have it big enough they like blur together if you have it too big they just look like blotchy and blurry or whatever I feel like there's not a way to stop the redshift render like once it's starting to spin up or whatever. I've never had that good of success with the mantra caustics. I don't know why it's this is going so slow. Usually the redshift ones are faster. This seems okay. But uh, yeah, the mantra like photon caching thing, I've always just had problems setting that up, but uh, I've seen some good results out of it. Like this, maybe the classic map where I think you can, you do this indirect light. You can, I think you can use this to do the photon mapping and photon points. Um, so yeah, you could just set it to caustic or whatever. You made this one? This is pretty cool. How did you do the uh, force field? This is like a lens. Uh, this is a lens flare? Or this is like a volume? Put some lens streaks on top of it. But yeah, these caustics look pretty good. You did the dispersion with Mantra as well? Very quickly. How quickly? <laughs> 10 seconds per frame? But yeah, these the caustics look amazing. All right. I think I'm, I'm gonna call it. I almost hit three hours. Um, so I'll probably just try to render this out. I might do the time remapping or whatever. Um, the, the, I don't know. This is a halfway between an F and a W, somewhere in between. Um, it was a somewhat interesting idea. Maybe I'll just keep it as a still frame or something. Um, but yeah, thanks for everyone showing sharing their their work and their submissions it's cool to see what everyone's been been uh entering for the contest and everything like that yeah thanks everyone for coming by brando thanks for gifting just letting those go into the strip club <laughs> um yes yeah, i hope everyone has a good rest of their friday um we might switch i don't know if we'll still keep doing these who, who lies tomorrow we might switch it up but um Plan to do the same, same time, 1, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific tomorrow. All right, take it easy.